This is Lisa from Mobile Tech Review, and this is the 13-inch M1 MacBook Pro. What I'm going to say about RAM also applies to the MacBook Air with the M1 CPU inside. So I've noticed that online, say, Mac rumors forums, I, I do see the, the things that you folks talk about endlessly. For, what, a month now? There's been avid discussions about 8 versus 16 gigs of RAM. You would think that this is, I won't say RAM is unsexy, but RAM's kind of unsexy, but a kind of business-like decision that you make. You, you kind of figure out what you need and you go for it. And it's never been such a big deal before. But people are really torn up about whether they should get 8 or 16 gigs of RAM in their M1 MacBook Air, MacBook Pro, or even the, the mini model as well. So let's talk about why this is for a minute first, or at least why I think this is. So two reasons. First off, I don't think that many of us expected that the M1 ARM-based new Macs would be as fast as they are. So they were placed at the entry level of Apple's lineup, their first ARM-based Macs, actually. So everybody figured, okay, it's like the old MacBook Air and 13-inch MacBook Pro, two Thunderbolt port models. Uh, for people who are not doing a whole lot of heavy lifting, that's fine. Then we all benchmarked them, used them, used them in real life, did really more demanding things with them, like Final Cut and Light, Adobe Lightroom and all that sort of thing. And we realized that they're really, really fast. As fast as a 16-inch MacBook Pro in some cases. Unless you're talking about that DGPU capability in the 16-inch MacBook Pro. They're still, MacBook Pro is still ahead there. So suddenly you're like, oh, well, I can do like real work. People are like, I'm going to replace my 16-inch MacBook Pro with this. And then you're thinking about RAM. So at first you're like, mm, 8 gigs, mm, base model fine. Now you're like, powerful machine in a tiny package. Doesn't even get hot, doesn't get noisy. Maybe I would want this. And then maybe I'm thinking about 16 gigs for the tasks that I would normally use a more powerful Mac for. So I think that's how it happened, which is fine. But what happens? Well, Apple charges $200 to go up to 16 gigs of RAM, which for some people is not cheap Cheetos, even though we're already talking kind of pricey laptops. These are the more affordable entry-level models. Um, by the way, Apple has a little education discount that pretty much is available to anybody and get 10% off, so that would be $180. Just go to their website and they'll offer it up to you. Worth a try. Also works on the Macs. But anyway, and the other problem was that probably Apple didn't think so many power users would become interested in this because they've been making a boatload of 8 gig models, whether it's the Air, the Pro, or the Mini. So it's really hard to get one. So people are thinking, do I wait six weeks to get that 16 gig model? Do I really need it? All of that sort of stuff comes into play too. And it's still the case. It's been, what, a month at least since these models have come out, and it's still just about impossible to get a 16 gig. Now I've had the 8 gig Air and Pro, and I have a 16 gig Pro here, because I'm one of those people with a 16 inch MacBook Pro that is actually thinking, you know, I can make do with this, but I can't make do with 8 gigs of RAM for the things I do. This might not be true for you. So, <laughs> while some people are taking the 8 versus 16 and making it as crazy and polarizing as the 2020 US election, it really shouldn't be, folks. So here it is. The way RAM and the way even the SSD works on the M1 is different. They're more integrated with the CPU. So that means that data can fly back and forth a lot faster. So sometimes when you might notice a lack of RAM and things slowing down a little bit, you won't notice it so much here because instructions are flying back and fast so fluidly. Nice that. But still, if you're doing more power user things, like say I do, I am using Final Cut Pro on this thing to edit 4K video quite a lot. Obviously, we have a YouTube channel. I'm using Lightroom and Photoshop together, both applications that love RAM. And then I've got my mail client running in the background, and then maybe I've got Slack or something running, and I've got Twitter running, and you get the idea. And then you start to want the 16 gigs of RAM because you'll notice that it starts to slow down a bit. It's not unusable. You can do it. But the kicker for me is if you're going to use an external display and I use a 4K monitor, that's going to use up some of the RAM too, drawing to the screen. I'm using both an external display and the internal panel. So you power user sort of people who are doing stuff like me. You want to juggle several heavy programs at once. You don't want to have it slow down a bit. You want that performance that the M1 is capable of at all times. Then 16 gigs of RAM is for you. Now remember, when the 16-inch MacBook Pro came out, when it was limited to only 32 gigs of RAM, there were people having a cow over that. So people do like their RAM. Another important thing to keep in mind is that 
this might be a new CPU architecture, a new operating system, and you can have ARM native apps, but still the whole memory model that Adobe works with when they make Photoshop or Premiere or any other program out there. If you need a certain amount of RAM ideally for those applications, and that really isn't changing, nobody said Adobe is changing their whole application model, you're still going to need it. But wait, that doesn't mean I'm saying, oh, everybody should go out and get 16 gigs of RAM. That's not the case. There's a lot of you out there who use your Mac for Word, Excel, or Google Docs, Zoom these days a whole lot, um, social networking stuff, binge watching The Mandalorian. Eight gigs of RAM is more than enough for that. And if you're thinking about future-proofing, which is something that people worry about since these are not upgradable machines, I think eight gigs of RAM is going to be fine in two or three years as well for those tasks. But there's another kind of future-proofing, too. It's not the future-proofing for a word that's suddenly going to need 72 gigs of RAM or something, which isn't going to happen for long. Yeah, no. But there's future-proofing for you and your growth. So some people are like, I totally am just going to be using Office and video conferencing and streaming video and stuff like that. And you know it. It's just not going to change. But there are... Many of you who contact me and you say, you know, I'm doing these tasks now, but I really love photography and I want to get into Photoshop or Lightroom or I want to start coding. And someday, I'm, you know, maybe I'm in my sophomore year in college right now, but I'm going to graduate in two years and I'm going to be compiling much bigger programs. You get what I'm saying? So if you think that that's you, that you plan to do more in the foreseeable, not five years, but in the next year or two with your Mac kind of stuff, then again, the 16 gigs of RAM makes sense. Lastly, memory, the way it works in computers these days. This is not just unique to the Mac. You know, Windows does the same thing, you got Linux, the, yeah. So you got this thing called swap memory, so, and it's basically virtual memory. So just because the operating system is setting up some swap memory, some get, get it prepared and get it ready, virtual memory, it doesn't mean that it needs it. It's there just in case. So don't look at your Mac's activity monitor and say, oh my god, it's using some swap. Well. That's just normal. All operating systems are going to do that. They're going to be ready for the best possible performance. Don't worry about the life of your SSD. I mean, unless you're doing absolutely crazy, I can't, I don't know what, batch processing in Lightroom, hundreds of images or something like that, which you can be writing back and forth to swap sort of thing. Don't worry about the life of the SSD. It's really not going to impact it that much. What you do care about with the Mac is something called memory pressure. And you can see it as a little colored graph. And if you're doing the normal things that you do with your normal setup, be it with an external monitor or anything like that, if the memory pressure graph is showing green, then it's good. If you're showing into the yellow a little bit, it's still OK. If you're showing it into the red, it means that you really could use some more RAM for your current task. So those of you who say own a Intel Mac right now and you're thinking about upgrading or something like that, look at your memory usage with the current amount of RAM and see how much you are using to get an idea of that. So there it is, ladies and gentlemen. I don't think it really is that emotional of an issue. It may be a challenge right now to get a 16 gig Mac if you want it. There's always the fear that what you buy is going to become obsolete. Hint, all computers will become obsolete. Uh, but I think you understand now. If you're that light kind of user, 8 gigs of RAM is fine. If you're saying, my god, you can do a lot of stuff with these things and hook up a big monitor and all that sort of thing, and I'm going to be a Final Cut Pro jockey or Adobe Premiere, you want 16 gigs of RAM. There it is. I wish it was easier to get right now, but you do. I'm Lisa from Mobile Tech Review. Be sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel for more cool tech videos and hit the notification bell so you know about them.